Hello, learners. Welcome back to Top Notch Online TV, the ocean of knowledge. In our today's lesson, you're going to be with me, teacher Tadias Baluka, the ocean of chemistry and a certified working chemical, your chemistry mentor. Work with me as we try to continue unpacking the concept of graph work in energy changes. In our previous lessons, we looked at several graphs, but today, we are going to finish up with the energy changes graph work by looking at one special graph. That is the graph of change in temperature gain as volume or time. So I just want to remind you on the point that we looked at the previous lesson. All graphs of energy changes are two lines of best fit and each line must pass through two correct plots and must be extrapolated. The first line of best fit must touch the y-axis. There is no angle graphs in energy changes. Graphs of highest temperature again is volume or time. The y-axis must not start from zero, zero. Because you see now, that's why I was telling you for a pre previous lesson that now this graph you find the your initial temperature is 23. Why do you need to start from zero? In that kind of a scenario, you may not get the marks for, for the scale. But now today we are going to look at another type of a graph whereby your graph uh, starts from zero, zero. So another important point that we also looked at, graph derived from discontinuous data, that's when you don't, the graph for temperature is not continuous, uh, must be extrapolated at joined at the point where there is no data. The extrapolated lines must never intersect on a plotted point. They must intersect either below or above all the plotted points. Now the graph that we are dealing with today is the one that is captured in the last part. That is telling us the graph of change in temperature again as volume or time, the y-axis must start from zero and the x-axis must also start from zero. So this graph starts from zero, zero. Let us look at what kind of a graph is this. So here we can have a graph as captured on the screen here whereby we are having whereby we are having now the volume of C and volume of solution A. So remember here we are having two solutions, solution A and solution B. These are the concepts of neutralization, whereby you may have hydrochloric acid in one beaker. Then you put sodium hydroxide on the burette. Then you continue like for this scenario, you put, you measure 16, of uh, solution C, you add four of solution A. Then you get the, the final temperature. Then you continue. We are continue reducing the volume of C and then increase the volume of A. Then you continue taking the highest temperature of each of them. Then we have the initial temperature. And how do you get the initial temperature, by the way, when you have both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide? You do that by measure the temperature of HCl, maybe it's 21. Then you measure the temperature of, of sodium and rock, maybe it's 19. Normally, they are not going to differ much. Mostly, they are almost the same because they've been prepared and allowed to stand for some time. Remember, all solutions for energy changes must be prepared on the day of the examination. Now, in that kind of a scenario, it is important to note that for you to get the initial temperature, whereby you have two solutions, you'll measure each of the solutions, then you get the average. That way you get the initial temperature and remain the same. So you can see the temperature is increasing. The temperature is increasing up to 24.5, then start to drop. And you can be able to see that's very much important for you to be able to understand that. And of course, there's an error here that uh, here this temperature we are using one decimal plus. So here you should be 0 0.0. Very important for you uh, to be able to understand. So the temperature should be recorded and should be given, should be consistent. If you decide to uh, to give a one day one place for all of them, it has to be given the way I've given it here. So don't uh, forget that. Don't forget that like there, there was a typing error. If you write 22.0, that becomes a mistake and lose the mark for decimal. So in that kind of now we have the initial temperature, which is the same. Then we are getting the change in temperature. Change in temperature, we are getting highest 
minor the initial, you get that. Highest, minor the initial, you get that. Highest, minor the initial, you get that. There is something I want you to understand. First of all, we don't have the, the temperature where, when the reaction is as what? When the reaction now, um, when, when at room temperature. So the starting point is the change in temperature is 1.5. So you can be able to see the temperature, the change in temperature also increasing up to 4.5, then start to drop. So again here, when now you're plotting the change in temperature, it must start from zero, unlike the others. Why? Because there is change in temperature. We are plotting change in temperature, not highest temperature. So and the starting point is the room temperature, whereby the change in temperature is zero. So in that kind of a scenario, we are talking about this kind of uh, a test rather this kind of a particle whereby you are plotting the change in temperature against volume of a added so in that kind of a scenario the temperature the graph must start from zero zero but remember there is something that is very unique here as you can be able to see the temperature is increasing but now when you start plotting the first plot is here you must extrapolate this line to start from zero because we must have the reference point in the room temperature. And the room temperature, this before the reaction started, when the change in temperature between the initial and the final was zero. So because the initial was also the final, the reaction is not started. So in that kind of a scenario, that is the point. So for this one, you must extrapolate your line to start at zero, zero. Then, of course, the volume of, uh, when you had not added any volume of A, to the C. Then no reaction was taking place. So the change in temperature was zero. That's why we have to start from zero, zero. So again, the line must pass through two correct plots. The other one must pass through two correct plots and extrapolate to meet at a higher temperature than the highest change in temperature, which is 4.5. As you can be able to see, this one is meeting at almost uh, five, uh, or rather uh, five, because five is here, that will be around 5.25, or rather 5.2, that the change in temperature that is shown from there. So these are special type of graph. And it is the only graph whereby the change in the, the, the graph starts from zero, zero. And just this is now for teachers. Some of the mistakes that occur due to uh, thermochemistry for students is that make sure that you standardize your thermometers by putting them in cold water if they are mercury or you can put them in ethanol if they are alcohol thermometers and you leave them overnight then the following day they are going to be in the same level so standardize your thermometers that is very key when you're preparing solution number two all solutions for energy changes must be prepared at least one day before the day of the examination because remember the heat of solution of some uh, substances are either exothermic or endothermic and we have come to the end of our beautiful lesson today. You, are, you have been with me, teacher Thaddeus Baluka, your chemistry mentor. Um, and if you have any question, you can put it in a comment section. Continue following the Top Notch Online TV. Continue liking, continue uh, giving us the topics that you want us to demystify in all the subjects in secondary school. Thank you. Until next time, bye-bye.